All too often we just assume more expensive drums are better, but better by what standard? So this video we're going to be talking about why cheap drums are better than more expensive drums. It's all in how you look at it. Every drum set has its strengths and its weaknesses. So pumped about this. The entry level drum set I ordered just came. Grant, drums are here, man. Oh yeah. I'm way more excited about this than I should be. This is actually the equivalent of the very first drum set I ever played on. The Ludwig Rocker Kick, so they're no longer called rockers. You might be like, why are you excited about a cheaper drum set? Because they sound great. We have lots of expensive drums here. Like we got the Yamaha Recording Customs here. We got the, uh, the Ludwig, what is that? The 20 inch Oyster Pink kit in there. We got the big Rogers in there. And then I mean, that's not all the kits we have, right? So down this hallway, we have a hodgepodge kit, and there we got we got the sonar kit from Grant. And then in here we got another Ludwig kit, another Rogers kit. So why am I so excited about this entry-level drum kit? But all the time I'm talking to my students about how great these things sound and how you can start gigging on them. When I was 14, I started playing the drum set. Got this like this exact kit, it was just called something different. And I uh, started gigging by the time I was 16. And I, I gigged on this type of kit until I was 19, until I got bought actually that kit, Dr. John Wooten's Yamaha Recording Customs. That was my next kit. I gotta sharpen this knife. <laughs> We've opened too many boxes here. <laughs> we just got done with the drum camp last week, so like all this gear in here is, is somewhat newish. We've only used it a few times at the camps. Um, yeah, I probably not gonna use those. See, this is the throne. Very small. <laughs> a little small. Good call on the blue, Grant. Good call on the blue. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Come on. Oh, it's got a little sparkle. I didn't know that. I know. I thought it was flat. Look at that, man. Look at like. Oh yeah. Look at that. Can't beat it. Ten inch. We always think about the negative of you know cheaper stuff, and we always think about the positive, more expensive stuff. Why can't we highlight some of the positives of stuff that maybe it doesn't cost as much, but still sounds good? Because in the end, with music, it's what it sounds like. What is it? Does it sound good? Fine, use it, nobody cares. So these are five ply. It's a mixture of hardwoods, so like basswood, poplar, mahogany, Luan, which a lot of people associate with plywood. All ply, from what I understand, all plywood is Luan, but not all Luan wood is plywood, if that makes sense. Bearing edges are clean, man. I'm actually really impressed with these. All right. Hardware's fine. And this cost, you get the cymbal set up, two stands, a snare stand, three toms, snare drum, bass drum, $5.99, I think it is, like on Sweetwater. I'll put the link down below just so you can see the exact kit. Then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take these and we're actually gonna mic them up. We just got some incredible new Lawton microphones in, and I think it'll be a great way to showcase these drums and show you some of what those microphones can do. So where's the, is that the tinge? Oh, ah, there's a little dude. Look at him, man, all hidden up in there. Like Look a at it. Doll. All right, minus one for that packaging. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, man, this, this finish is great. Yeah, I'm really surprised by how much I like it on such an inexpensive kit. I mean, it looks. We got the green sparkle in there, we can compare it to that. Ooh. But why don't we take a little comparison? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. And there's the green sparkle. It's actually sparklier? Is that a word? <laughs> sure. It, yeah. I mean, come on. It's got more sparkles. <laughs> Alright, let's see how these bearing edges are. I honestly expected them to be somewhat more unfinished for what we what I No! <laughs> oh man! That's been no that no hand on either. That would have been straight on the bearing. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good grab. That was a good grab right Pro there. Pro tip! Cat like skills. No! <laughs> no! So these these um seams look just as good. That's the more expensive. I guess it's different hardware. Well, let's compare it to the more expensive. Again, let's just go back to this kit. What is this kit we're on? Like 2,500, 3,000 for just the wood? Yeah, somewhere around there. It looks like very similar hardware, if we're being honest. Very similar. Yeah, the mounts on those are those Atlas mounts, and this is more of the generic Tom mm -hmm. mounts. Yeah, still, just really, it's really nice. Okay, so let's check out what kind of drum heads they send with it. I'm interested. They feel, they feel all right, the rims. Yeah, it's just a little, yeah, that's deep. 
deep collar right there. Mm, they're gonna wear out quick though, you can, you can see. Yeah. So what we will do, we're gonna actually use the resonant heads that they bring, that's the bottom heads that they send with this kit. And then we're gonna replace the batter head, so that's the side that you actually hit. Inlay and everything. Hmm. It's plastic. It's not or metal. It's not wood. It's pretty. Hardware is solid. It's the hardware is more solid than I thought it was going to be. Now we got hardware. Snare stand or stand? Oh, that's that's a good good. oh, look at that. Although this one actually doesn't feel bad. Yeah. So the hardware is where they kind of save money. Look at that. It's weird. This looks like the that old. Oh yeah. This is from like the mid fifties, you think? Yeah, late forties, mid fifties. There it is, dude. It's just exactly. Oh wow. Oh, okay. Looks exactly like it. That stand came from that kit, <laughs> which came from a kid that I didn't creepily follow around Indianapolis to maybe buy that kit from. That guy is little coat. It's not bad. I really actually like this type of thin hardware. Anything you can have to have a smaller footprint on stage is great. Old school Tom Arms mount to the kick drum. Point number one of why cheap drums are better than expensive drums is because it's the most obvious point. They're cheap. Now look, we're talking about one step up from them being toys. So Donner, First Act, East, Easton, or Easton, I didn't Easton make back. <laughs> Those are gonna be, like I had a Donner kit that was almost $500 for a similar setup, and people were saying, man, my kid broke it in the first you know, week, and I can't get the company to replace parts. The great thing about going to entry-level kit is you can contact these companies, like any of the bigger companies, Tom, Ludwig, Pearl, all of them have their entry-level kits. You can contact them if, if parts break. The second point, it's really, you don't have to worry about damaging them. So I know with like with my kids, I was very worried about, you know, one of my sons started playing bass and I mean, he cracked the finish, you know, so having, having drums that you're not overly worried about that they're gonna get destroyed, but that can hold up so that we're a step level up from kid drum sets. Third thing, they sound fantastic if you put good drum heads on. There's nothing wrong with them. They showed this when in like the, what, 50s and 60s, Whenever they were making what they're called midge drum sets, made in Japan drum sets. Matter of fact, we have a bass drum from R. David R. that is a made in Japan midge. And it's a, a root, a Ruther. It sounds good. We, we put good heads on it, we put it with a Rogers kit. Mm, that sounds good. And so what they were doing was they were taking those the same shells they used to make more expensive drums for some of the companies, Yamaha, etc. And they just made these off brands. There's another one over there called Paramount. So we're gonna take it and we're gonna put, uh, so we're gonna put either a Studio X or this response two on the snare drum. And then we have a uh, texture coat, a 10 inch, 12 inch, 16 inch. And then we'll put a Super Kick two on the batter for the kick drum. And these things are gonna sound. Amazing. Very professional gear space in here. We're gonna have to reorganize this, but lots of drum heads from Big Shout Out to Aquaria and then Symbol Collection that I didn't mean to make happen, but. Reason number four, cheaper drums are better than more expensive ones is because they're more than durable enough to gig on. Like I told you, I gigged on them. I played on them for 14, 15, then I started taking pro gigs at 16. And I gigged all the way to 19. I mean, thousands of hours of practice and gig time went on my Ludwig Rocker kit or Ludwig Accent, which is what they call it now. Reason number five is they're great for testing the instrument out without a huge buy-in. And I know we're, a lot of it's revolving around the cost, but these are all, to me, individual reasons. You know, you don't have to worry about them being torn out, torn up. You don't have to worry about, you know, a huge buy-in. Uh, and they maintain their, their resale value. So if you decide, I don't like these, you're gonna be able to resell them for close to what you, what you bought them for. It's like short-ish right now, but I kind of prefer that. Like you get the full tone, and it goes, it goes away. away. Yeah. This will be a nice ambient mic.
okay? I think the only thing is just don't mess it up. Other than that, it's fine. All right. So don't mess it up. And then that's yeah. Gonna I think the dramatic lighting helps this. Yeah. <laughs> it's more pressure. Yeah, so there's there's actually a reason I'm not doing this because it stresses me out. Grant's a stronger man than I am. Well, I didn't pay for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you just find a good spot there. About right there. Yep, that's perfect. Scientifically, that's the perfect spot. Oh boy, here comes the knife. There it is. After all these years, I still am not a fan of that sound. There it is. All right. We're good. We're good. Okay. You didn't nick it as good, bad as I nicked the last one. Did you? <laughs> Overall, this kit sounded incredible. There were a couple of things that we, you always come across these things whenever you're recording and working with the drums. First one when, with this kit was the floor tom. Whenever you held it and hit it, it resonated crazy long. And then whenever you put it on a hardwood floor, it killed it completely. Like there was no resonance. The fix for that was we actually set it on top of a, a piece of foam. They actually make booty shakers specifically for floor toms this, for this reason. And that brought all the resonance back. But then it was too much when we put the mics on it. So turns out putting it on a carpet was the perfect compromise. And good thing is, your drums are probably gonna be on some sort of carpet anyway. The other thing is the snare drum, the lugs were backing out. Look, I've got a $1,000 Black Beauty and I had to stop a session and go to Lowe's and get some Loctite to keep that from, keep those lugs from backing out. So this isn't uncommon. Uh, a, a fix for that is getting the non-permanent Loctite. Don't get the permanent type or it's going to be a, a piece of wall art. Just putting a little bit of that on each one of those lugs is gonna keep them from backing out. If you dug this video, check out this one where I tell you five reasons e-kits are better than a acoustic drum kits.